church 
There's some folk praying outside right now, and you ain't even say good morning to the Lord. He says, Lord, he calls him shepherd. He calls him Adonai. And if he was Anglo-Saxon, he would call him Los Warden, which means keeper of bread. Because he's bread from heaven. He's, I heard the old preacher say, manna from heaven. Feed me until I want no more. And as a child, I was fascinated with this term. I thought manna was a fancy term. I love words. And I come to find out manna ain't really all that fancy when you go to the Hebrew. In Hebrew, manna means what is this? Because when the Hebrew people were in the wilderness for 40 years, didn't nobody have no easy bake oven? Didn't nobody have no Pillsbury Doughboy bread? But the Lord allowed manna to rain down every day. And when they bent into it, they looked at one another and said, what is this? And every now and then I look at my bank account and I didn't work the hours, but the money is there. Every now and then when I get sick in my body, don't have enough sense to pray for healing, I feel something moving on the inside. I look down at my hands and my hands look new. I look down at my feet and they did too. And I got to ask the question, what is this? Says, Lord, my servant. Lying at home, sick of the pause. I gotta pause here because he just said the second strange thing. He says, My servant lies at home, sick. And before I can talk about him being sick, I gotta talk about the word servant because he uses servant twice in this conversation. In verse 9, he will use a different Greek word for servant than he uses now in verse 6. In verse 9, he says, I say to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. And that Greek word is doulos, which means worker. But here in verse 6, he uses the Greek word paes, which means servant and or child. So what we really have here, the father interceding on behalf of his child. And if there's anything we ever needed nowadays, it's more fathers interceding on behalf of their children. Oh, I, I, know, I know that some sisters were going to help me right there, but if there were some good men in here, they would say amen right now. If there's anything that we need today, it's some good black men. We used to have hardworking men and pretty women. Now we got pretty men and hardworking women. You ain't want me to say it, shouldn't have gave me the microphone. If there's anything that we need is some good men praying for their children. But we got boys that won't pull up their pants and women that won't close their legs. Something is wrong here. When 71% of teen pregnancy come from fatherless homes, 70% of high school dropouts come from fatherless homes, 90% of homeless and runaways come from fatherless homes, 63% of all suicides come from fatherless homes, 85% of children with behavioral disorders come from fatherless homes, 90% of folk questioning their sexual identity come from fatherless homes, 98% of the incarcerated come from fatherless homes. I wish more men would stand up and be men. Lord, servant, a child, a child lies at home sick of the palsy. It says something strange here because palsy, the palsy was a paralytic disease. It would paralyze you from the neck down. You wouldn't be able to walk. You wouldn't be able to talk. You wouldn't be able to move. You would be completely desensitized. It's a sad indictment that some of us got dumb palsy. Yeah, I said that, and I'll say it again. Some of us got dumb palsy, We've been hanging around dumb folk, listening to dumb stuff, talking dumb stuff, so long we started to believe our own lies. Some of us got sin palsy, We've been sinning so long, now we're starting to pray for our shack up situation. Lord, please bring John home. If you get quiet, it's a sign you're guilty about something. If I hit your nerves, you got to say amen to throw the folk off the right only God should know your business. He says he's sick of the palsy. He's paralyzed. He cannot move. But he says a third strange thing. The centurion just talking crazy because he says he's paralyzed. He's desensitized. But he's grieving. 
previously taught. Which means that the young man was still feeling pain. Now, now, he was not supposed to feel anything because of his sickness. But he was still holding on to life. And I come to encourage somebody this afternoon that if you're uncomfortable in any way, if you're feeling any kind of hurt or pain, it's a clear sign that whatever Satan sent your way didn't work. I'm going to let that resonate for a little while. If, you, if you've had to lay awake at night, and I know your tears don't taste like Kool-Aid. I know, I know you've had to use rocks for pillows. I know you called on mama, and mama was not there, and it kind of hurt when mama can't help you. But if you ever felt any kind of pain, it lets you know I'm still here. You ought to tell somebody, I'm still here. I got some bills, but I'm still here. I may be sick right now as I'm talking to you, but I'm